Hi! Oh. <clears throat> this is my all-electric zero-turn riding mower. I bought this thing at the beginning of last year and mowed with it for the entire year. And last year, I loved this thing and couldn't recommend it highly enough. However, it's a new year. I've taken this thing out of cold storage and started using it again. And now my opinion of it has soured quite significantly to the point where I don't think I could recommend you buy this thing anymore. Shut up! I'm trying to do an intro. <laughs> Full disclosure, this video is not sponsored by Ryobi, nor do I have any affiliation with Ryobi whatsoever. However, this video is sponsored by... All right, new car. Oh crap, now I gotta get car insurance. I hate that process. What, what's, th what's this? Why don't you check out Policy Genius? Shopping for car insurance doesn't have to be awful. Oh, no, no, I've got a broker, I don't need this. Oh, a broker that you'll send an email to and they'll reply in three days? Didn't you say you hate that process? Well, yeah, but yeah, why don't you try this instead? Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy insurance. Go to policygenius.com slash agingwheels. Okay, now just go through and answer some simple, straightforward questions. Okay. And now it'll give you several estimates. Wow, several of these prices are far lower than I expected. Yep, Policy Genius has saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. Cool, now what? Now they'll look for ways to save you more. For instance, you can bundle your home and auto insurance. Neat. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance companies. If they find a better rate, they'll switch you over to it for free. Now see, wasn't that easy? Yeah, in fact, now I'm gonna comparison shop my existing car insurance. Head to policygenius.com slash agingwheels to get your free home and auto insurance quotes and see how much you can save. And thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Policy Genius for saving me money and time. At the beginning of last year, when I picked up my Ryobi mower, I had three main options for electric zero-turn mowers to choose from. There's this model from Cub Cadet, with a 42-inch deck, an advertised ability to mow up to two acres on a single charge, and at the time, it cost $4,500. Then there's this option from Ego, also with a 42-inch deck and an advertised ability to mow up to two acres, although it's expandable if you buy some more batteries, and at the time, it cost $5,000 and looks like a cyborg tarantula. Then there were three options from Ryobi. The two smaller ones I didn't really care about, I only cared about the big one, with a 54-inch deck and an advertised ability to mow up to three and a half acres on a single charge. At the time, it cost $5,000. So given those numbers and the fact that my yard is almost exactly two acres, the Ryobi was the obvious choice for me. Now, I did mention that those prices were from last year. Here's those prices now. Wow! What happened? Now this thing's ability to mow up to three and a half acres on a charge is, and I knew this before I bought it, a big lie, but we'll get to that later. How's about a tour? Headlights, parking brake, mower deck uppy downy with stop, badging, go-go sticks. Storage. Cup holders to fill your drinks with grass clippings. More storage. Controls. Key. On. Auxiliary. Mower start stop. Headlights. These two buttons are low speed drive and low speed cut. There is a two speed setting for the drive sticks. And a two speed setting for the mower blades. Battery indicator. And if you want a USB charging port. All the batteries reside here underneath the seat, and this is the charging port. And in case you're wondering, the seat does adjust forth and back. Now on every other mower I've ever been on, I've had to have the seat adjusted all the way in its furthest back position, but on this one, its furthest back position is too far back. This is the first mower I've had to adjust it forward slightly. Quite a range of motion. Electric mowers are substantially more convenient than gas-powered mowers. I don't have to go get gas in a jerry can. I don't have to change the oil ever, because there isn't any. I don't have to change transmission or hydrostatic fluid. I don't have to do any of that sort of maintenance, and there's no belts. All I have to do is, when I'm done mowing, plug this thing into the wall to charge, and the next time I need to mow, it will be ready for me. I don't have to mess around with fuel stabilizer for winter storage. I don't have to mess with the choke. When I'm ready to use this thing, I just turn it on, and it's ready to go. And, obviously, it's a lot quieter than a gas-powered mower. Even with the blades activated, it's a heck of a lot quieter. Obviously, there's still some wind noise, 
but it's a heck of a lot quieter than a gas powered mower by a large margin. I don't have to wear any hearing protection whatsoever. But aside from the big obvious difference, this thing is basically a standard zero turn mower and it mows just like you would expect a zero turn mower to mow. <laughs> They have modified the drive mechanism ever so slightly. If I pull all the way forward on both sticks, both wheels spin up a full speed. But if I pull back on this wheel stick, this wheel also slows down. I don't know what to call it, maybe some sort of anti-slip control. All it's doing is preventing you from spinning one wheel up at full speed while the other one stopped and digging a big rut in your ground. It's a small difference, but it's there. And probably impossible to see on camera. The deck. I was impressed to find out this is of the fabricated variety with the welded on strengthening rib around the edge and everything. It's worth noting the smaller two Ryobi models have a stamped steel deck rather than this, but this one has the full on fabricated deck. The deck consists of three independent blades, each powered with their own independent electric motor. And if there's any complaint I have about this mower, aside from the really big one that we'll get to in a minute, it's that the motors powering these blades are a little bit on the weak side. If the grass is too thick or too tall, you're gonna have to take it a little bit more slowly than you would with most other mowers, which is a little bit annoying. Now the answer to this is to mow more often, but sometimes that's not an option. One advantage of having blades linked together with a belt is if you have one blade struggling, you have the momentum from the other two blades to help it along. With this setup, each mowing blade is on its own. Okay, now the big problem with this mower. There's clues pointing to this problem all over the mower if you just know what to look for. 48 volt. That is a multiple of 12. I could do math. Brushless! Brushless! It's not weird that it says brushless, it's weird what it doesn't say. And finally, there's this warning on the charging port cover. Always charge when not in use. You know what kind of battery likes constant float charging? Lead acid. This is powered by lead acid batteries. Lead acid batteries suck. Here's the cons. They're heavy and therefore not very power dense. They can't charge all that fast. They have a crap lifespan as anyone who has ever owned a car can attest. If you discharge them below 50% state of charge on the regular, then you significantly reduce their already crap lifespan. If you're not using them, they need to be maintenance charged. And as the state of charge drops, they experience significant power fade. Pros, they're cheap. Oh, that's it. And then there's Ryobi's claim that this thing can mow three and a half acres on a single charge. That's not true. Maybe in super ideal conditions, you could get three and a half acres of mowing done. But in the real world, and this is just a guesstimate, this is not based on any science whatsoever. I think two and a half acres is your upper limit number. And remember that would be from 100% to 0% state of charge, which would be super unhealthy for the lead acid batteries in this thing. If you discharge lead acid batteries down below 50% state of charge, you significantly reduce their lifespan. So take that two and a half acre number, cut it in half, and you're left with one and a quarter acres of realistic mowing time that you can get done with this thing without prematurely destroying your batteries. Now remember my yard is two acres, which is more than one and a quarter. So last year, after I finished mowing my yard, this thing would regularly be at 30 to 35% state of charge with a little bit of variance. And those numbers are less than 50. And after an entire year of mowing down below 50% state of charge, now this thing no longer has enough battery capacity to mow my entire yard on a single charge. In fact, it only has enough battery capacity to mow half my yard. And then I have to charge it, and this thing charges incredibly slowly. So now it takes two days to mow my whole yard after just a year, and I'm not too pleased with that. So if I knew all this before I bought the mower, why did I buy it? Well, it's sort of an experiment. Batteries like this are supposed to last three to five years, which isn't great, and I only expected to get two to three years of usable life out of these batteries before I either replaced them or swapped them out for lithium batteries. I didn't expect them to only last a year. So that's why I can't recommend you buy this mower unless you can comfortably mow your entire yard within the top 50% state of charge. Again, there's nothing wrong with the mower itself, except for the blade motors being a little bit weak. It's just that the batteries suck. And just in case you were wondering, I kept the mower plugged up to the charger 100% of the time I wasn't using it, and over winter, I stored the mower right here, plugged into the charger 100% of the time in this building that is heated, so it never dropped below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So, what am I gonna do? Well, the ideal solution is to sell my mower and buy a proper electric zero turn mower with a lithium battery pack. 
I'm never going back to gas again, so that is totally out of the question. The problem is, I only have two options, and one of them is not even available for sale yet. Since last year, Ego has released a new electric zero-turn mower, this one with a 52-inch deck and a claimed mowing range of four acres, which sounds great, but it's $7,000. Now, I don't think that's an unreasonable price, but that's, that's getting up there. And Ryobi has announced, but not released yet, three new zero-turn mowers, this time with proper lithium battery packs. They're going to be available in 30-inch, 42-inch, and 54-inch, and they're going to cost four, five, and six thousand dollars. I don't really care about the two smaller ones. The only one I'm interested in is the big one, the 54-inch one for six thousand dollars. Now, Ryobi claims that it can mow five acres on a single charge, which is fantastic because it has lithium batteries this time. I'm more inclined to believe that number. Even if it is a lofty goal, that's two and a half times the size of my yard, so I'll be good. And they're claiming that it has the equivalent power of 42 horsepower, which is a lot, but it's also kind of a meaningless number. All they're doing there is just tallying up the peak power figures from every motor on the mower, of which there are five, so it doesn't really tell me anything. Hopefully that means they've upgraded the, the motors on the deck that on mine are a little bit underpowered. I'm just assuming, but hopefully that's what that means. Ryobi decided to get all innovative with these new zero-turn mowers, and they've ditched the standard double go-go stick arrangement for a joystick. So it's right about here. It's just a joystick that controls all the movements of the mower. They're calling it iDrive because apparently no one at Ryobi drives a BMW. Now, I don't know how I feel about this joystick arrangement. The only way to find out is to actually drive a mower with the joystick. But I don't know how I'm gonna do that. For one thing, they're not available for sale yet and they're not going to be until early summer. But even when they are available for sale, the only way that I can try one out is to buy one. So I'll have to spend $6,000 on a mower I may or may not like. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll buy one of these new Ryobi mowers to try it out. Maybe I'll buy the Ego. Or maybe I'll lithium swap this one that I already have. I mean, I've got two whole quotas worth of lithium iron phosphate cells ready to be dumped into something. Until I decide though, I'm just gonna keep mowing my yard over two days and be increasingly annoyed every time I do it. And that's the Ryobi ZT540E. Great mower, crap batteries. I waited a year to make this video and I'm so glad I did because if I'd made this same video last year, I would have recommended this mower and I would have recommended you go out and buy one. And then come this year, I would have regretted that. I did not expect these batteries to lose so much usable capacity so quickly, but they did. Thanks for watching.